Hi everyone, it's Jennifer. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today's card shows how to create your own stencil and also how to color embossing paste. I've showed colored embossing paste in past videos, but I've learned some tips and tricks along the way and I thought I'd share them here today. This card also uses the new Simon Says Stamp April card kit. I really love the stamp set in this uh, kit. It's fantastic. And I will be also showing another variation of this card at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and start with that vellum light bulb in the center of the card. Here's the stamp set from the kit. You can also buy it separately. I have several uh, light bulb stamp sets, but I really like the greetings in this one. There's some really great ones. So I'm going to go ahead and start by um, uh, heat embossing the light bulb on vellum. So this is the Ranger Liquid Platinum, one of my favorites. Many people have asked about these little cable clips that I use to hold my spoons inside my embossing containers. These are out of stock on Amazon, so I'll link to some others that I got, and they work well too. I really like being able to hold the spoon outside of the powder so I don't have powder all over the spoon. You could also put the cable clips on top of the lid if you wanted to. But this system really has worked well for me, and you can find little containers just about anywhere. But I will link to all this below in my YouTube description and on my blog. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and heat set this liquid platinum embossing powder from Ranger. I love this warm silver that you get. It's just beautiful. Now I decided I wanted the center of this, the little heart, to be kind of a pop of color. So I decided to go ahead and emboss the same powder in the same image on a, like a pinkish red paper. And I'll cut out the heart and put that in the center of the cut out vellum light bulb. I really like this powder because it's not too shiny, it's not too over the top. It's just a warm silver that is just beautiful on pretty much any kind of card. Now let's go ahead and do the background before we do the stencil. Now for the background, I didn't want a huge contrast between the white and the yellow paste, so I decided to do some soft stamping on that background, and I'm using Soft Vanilla from Hero Arts. It's just a soft yellow color, almost like an ivory. Now I'm going to stamp this great sentiment repeatedly over the background. The trick to stamping repeatedly over a background is to start in one corner and work your way up and over, and that's the easiest way to fill in the area. Now I'm stamping this second row kind of slightly, or the second column slightly offset, so that we end up with a great uh, repeating pattern of this fun, of this fun sentiment. Now this also, I did this because I, the sentiment really didn't work on the front of the card, so by having it on the background and then also stamping on the inside, I could include a sentiment, stamp sentiment when it didn't seem to fit on the design, which I'll talk about more later. So now for the creating your own stencil, I have this die from Simon Says Stamp. It's the sunshine die. I love these rays. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it from two scraps of white cardstock. Now I'm doing two so that I can glue them together and create a thicker uh, stencil because stencils have a little bit of dimension to it so that when you put paste over it the paste has some dimension to it. So I went ahead and quickly cut both of them at the same time and then I'll glue them together. I could have glued them together at the beginning if I wanted to. Now since this is paper and I'm going to put in paste over it I'm not going to reuse this stencil but that's okay because it was quick to do and just made from scraps so I'm okay with throwing it away. If you wanted something that you could reuse you could cut this from some sort of transparency or some plastic packaging then you could reuse it over and over again. Now I decided instead of that small little opening in the center of my stencil, I wanted a bigger opening so I could put my entire light bulb in the center there. So I went ahead and die cut a circle, you could punch a circle too, and I'm going to add this to change the look of my stencil so that there's enough room for my light bulb to fit in the open space. So this circle I'm just going to glue to the back of my stencil. Basically I'm completely changing the way the stencil will look so that there is a bigger opening there in that where the center of where all the rays meet in the center. So now it's time to put the stencil down. I always tape my paper and my stencil down whenever I'm using embossing paste because it really will mess the whole thing up if it shifts while you're putting the paste down. So I tape my paper to my work surface and then I tape the stencil on top of that. I'm just using some post-it tape, but any kind of masking tape or washi tape would work for this also. Now to color my embossing paste today, I'm going to use some ink. You could pretty much use any ink you wanted to. I'm using Simon Says Stamp Sunshine Ink and I'm just pressing it onto my craft sheet. If you don't have a craft sheet, you can use a plastic uh, plate to do this. Now I'm taking some of my Wendy Vecchi embossing paste in the white. I love this. This stuff is the creamiest. The Dreamweavers is the same. And you don't need much. Now see, I have got quite a bit here. And then I remember, okay, I don't need as much as I think, so I'm going to put some back. You need the smallest amount. Trust me. You'll see it. It little goes a long way. Now I'm going to take this paste and use my tool. You could use a credit card to do this if you wanted to. 
to mix the color in with the paste. Now distress inks would work with this, reinkers would work with this, but I find just taking the ink pad and smearing it onto my craft sheet and mixing the paste in does the trick. So now I'm going to go ahead and spread the paste out over my stencil. I'm working in the direction of my stencil, so from the center out along those rays. That always seems to do the best. And you can see I'm putting on a very thin layer here. You don't want to work it too much. You just want to make sure you get a nice, thin, even layer covering the whole surface. And you'll see here that a little bit goes a long way. I can keep going back and getting some more of the paste. And there we have, I wasted very little, I used very little, and I was able to cover the whole thing. So always be sure to use less than you think you need. So now I'm going to take off the stencil and pitch that. And now we have the embossing paste on the background. To add shimmer to this, instead of using glitter, I'm going to use a sparkle embossing powder. This is a little more subtle than glitter and I really like the results. So I'm going to go ahead and put this onto the wet paste. Now there are two ways you can heat set embossing powder on embossing paste. One is to let the paste completely dry, then heat up the powder. The other is to heat both up right away. I prefer to let the paste dry first and then heat the powder because then you don't get any bubbling of the paste, but it's really up to you. I actually was a little impatient this time around, so I'm going to um, go ahead and heat it all up right away. If you keep the heat gun moving around, you don't have to worry about it too much. You don't have to worry about bubbling. Uh, so I'm just going to keep make sure that I keep the heat moving, and you'll see that um, embossing powder turn into just a nice sparkle on top of the embossing paste. Now you could just use the embossing powder with ink, uh, with like a yellow pigment ink, and get similar results, but it won't have the texture and that raised look to it. That's what's really fun about having the embossing paste under the embossing powder. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep heating this up until you see that all the embossing powder has melted and now the embossing paste will be pretty much dry too because we added this heat right away. So there we created our own stencil, changed it up a little bit by putting the circle behind it. Then we colored our own embossing paste and then added sparkle to it with embossing powder. So it's really taking some of your products that you already have and really stretching them and getting more from them. So now let's go ahead and finish up the card. I decided to take this uh, embossing paste background that we created and pop it up onto a note card. So I'm using some dimensional tape here. This is my favorite foam tape right now because I like to use a lot of it when I have a heavy piece of cardstock like this one that has lots going on on it. I put two long pieces down the side and then two pieces in the middle also. And this just makes it nice and sturdy. I'm going to go ahead and add this to a Hero Art Snow note card. It's my favorite white note card. So now we have our little uh, light bulb to put in the center here. Now with vellum, I always like to hide my adhesive. I don't want it showing through, and I don't find any of the adhesives really good at hiding um, through the vellum. So I'm going to just put a, cut a little piece of foam tape and put it right behind the heart. And later I'll probably go back and squirt some glossy accents under there to make sure that it doesn't come off. But that way you don't see the adhesive uh, through the vellum. It's a great way to add any kind of vellum or see-through embellishment that you may create. So now I'll be honest, when I came up with this idea, I didn't think about where I was going to put the sentiment. It really doesn't fit anywhere. And the solution to that, whenever I come up with a card where the sentiment, like a stamp sentiment, doesn't, doesn't fit, my solution is to use a die cut sentiment. I love die cut sentiments because of this. You can stick it anywhere on a card. You can put it on top of things. You don't have to worry about using an ink with it. So I went ahead and die cut this Love You sentiment. This is also from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to add this over my embossing paste. I love delicate die cuts like this. I'm going to hold it with my tweezers. These tweezers kind of clamp onto it. And I'm adding little dots of glossy accents in various places on the back of the die cut. Glossy accents will hold super tight, so I don't have to worry about it falling off. And this will also hold on top of the vellum and the embossing paste, because this is going to kind of stretch across everything. So I'm using my tweezers, I'm going to place it exactly where I want it, and then I'm going to take an acrylic block and put it on top just so that it doesn't pop up. It doesn't take long for this to dry, and really in no time flat, it'll be dry and stuck there for good. So I'm going to do the same for the word you, put some glossy accents on the back here, and then I'll place it on top. Once I have both of the words down, I'm going to put something else heavier over this just for a few minutes to leave it set. And I'll put a little jar of embossing paste actually. And there we have a greeting that floats across our card when I really had no place to stamp a sentiment.
However, for the inside of the card, I'm going to stamp that same sentiment that I used for the background just in the bottom corner using that bright yellow ink once again, and that just kind of ties everything together. I love adding something on the inside of the card. It really is a great way to just give it a finished look. And I also decided to put a little bit of glossy accents on top of that heart so that it has a little bit of shine. Now I'll be honest, this card wasn't the first one that I did today trying to come up with a design. For the first time I went around, I didn't leave enough room there in the center for the light bulb. Now I never pitch a card, I always resurrect it and try to create it into something because I figure somebody will like to get it. So I just decided to put a heart in the center of the sun rays and then I had stamped the sentiments in between all the rays. So even though I didn't end up you know, doing this for the card that I had intended, I did just save it and create it into a different card. So never pitch your pieces because they can be used for something. Now for this heart I added a little Wink of Stella Shimmer and some glossy accents on top of it and then popped it onto the card. So there you have a fun way to create your own stencil and also color your own embossing paste. If you have any questions on the products I use you can look at the YouTube description below or go to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com. I'll have more pictures and links over at my blog also so be sure to head there. Thanks so much for watching I hope to see you again in another video.